Hello and welcome to this beginner's tutorial for people who want to start developing software in a Linux environment. First, I'll tell you where you can download a current Linux distribution. Then, I'll show you how to install additional software. And finally, you'll get a very brief introduction to the GNU Born Again shell, which is generally referred to as the Bash shell. In this tutorial, I use Kubuntu 13.10, the version released in October 2013. It features a modern desktop environment called KDE and can be downloaded from kubuntu.org. Once you're on the site, click on Get Kubuntu and follow the steps described. Let's now look at how to install additional software. You can try one of the graphical installers to download, install and configure the programs you desire. To start an installer, which is also known as a package manager, click on the K menu and then search for install or package. Then click on the Muon package manager to start it. As there are thousands of programs available, you have to filter out the ones you desire. Let's install, for example, the Mozilla Firefox web browser. As programs in Linux share program data and so-called programming libraries, these have to be installed as well. The sharing mechanism saves considerable amounts of space on your hard drive. But don't worry, the package manager will install everything automatically. Simply click on the Mark IV installation button, confirm the additional packages, OK, and apply the changes. Since this is an administrative change to the system, we have to enter our password. Note that it is also possible to install more than one program at one time, but to save us uh, some time in the video, we only picked a single program. When this is done, we'll try to install programs from the shell. The bash is generally used from a terminal window. Click on the K menu and search for terminal. Then you can click on console to start it. Since programmers tend to use the shell frequently, we should also add it to our favorites. Click on the K menu again, search for terminal, right click on the console and say add to favorites. From now on we have it directly when we click on the K menu. As the bash is the default shell in Linux, the terminal will start with this shell. Kubuntu is a Debian-based Linux distribution. This means you can use apt, the advanced package tool, to install programs. As system-wide installations require administrative privileges, you'll have to call apt with superuser rights. This can be done with sudo superuserdo. After sudo, we write the program we want to run as superuser. So apt get in this case and apt is responsible for both installing and updating and removing packages. Hence we need to tell apt-get what we want to do. If you don't know the command we need, the shell's auto-completion will help us. So we can simply hit the tab key once, doesn't do anything, twice will tell us all the options there are. If an option is already unique, then tab will immediately complete. So I say in for install, hit the tab key and it's auto-completed. As version 3 of the Python programming language is an excellent choice for people new to programming, let's install a few packages related to this language. Python 3 dash and then numpy for numeric Python and more packages. Here I will just copy and paste. Copying is done by simply selecting with a mouse. Pasting is done with a middle mouse key or if you don't have a middle mouse key with both keys at once. Python 3 SciPy, which is scientific, <coughs> which offers scientific functions and statistical functions and so on. And Python 3 matplotlib allows doing nice graphs of these functions. Hitting enter will <coughs> we'll demand our password, which I have to enter again. So we get the super user privileges. Here we have to confirm that additional packages will be installed. Yes, we want to do this. We don't have to write the Y because it's a default, because it's uppercase here. So simply hit enter. 
So now all the required packages and additional packages will be downloaded, installed and configured. However, the terminal window might be a little intimidating over time, particularly at the beginning. So let's probably look at the file manager, which is easier to start with. I start the file manager Dolphin here, which looks like what you're already used to, and close the shell. By default, files and folders are opened with a single click, just like in a web browser. Click on the music folder. It is empty. Now let's look at this directory in the terminal. You can do this by using Shift and F4. This opens the directory music in the terminal. If I close the file browser, I can open the file browser at this position from the terminal by clicking on File, Open File Manager. So there's a good connection between the two, but there's an even more direct connection. By simply hitting F4 without the Shift button, I get the terminal here and the file manager here. If I navigate back out to Home, it does the corresponding command for me here. If I navigate into Videos, it goes into Videos. If I click on Home, it goes back out. You can do the same directly from within the terminal. CD means call directory and enters a directory. CD documents and the documents directory. CD minus goes into the last directory we've been at. You can do CD minus again. If you simply want to use the last command, you can use the up key once. If you want to navigate to your home directory from nowhere, from no matter where you are, you can do CD tilde because the tilde is short for your home directory. That's where your own files lie. Or, even shorter, let's go back into documents, you can simply type cd without any argument and you're back out. All right, now we want to create or remove <coughs> directories. This can be done with mkdir, like make directory, code, enter. And we see immediately here in sync the code directory is created. I can remove it with rmdir, but this only works for empty directories. If I do rm-r, which means recursively delete everything, then I can even delete non-empty directories. If I want to use a command I've been using before, I can do Control r and look for this command, like the mkdir, and get it immediately. And with enter, I execute it. Now let's go into this directory. If I want to enter a directory which was already used in the last command as the last part of it, I can use escape dot so I don't have to write it myself again. Now I want to list the, <coughs> the files here. I can do this with ls, like list files. There are no files, of course. Let's try to create a Python program here. I can right click into the empty space and say create new text file. I call it hello.py. A single click on the file opens the text editor. Now inside the text editor, I write a so-called shebang, which will tell the operating system to run Python. <coughs> and let's say user bin and Python 3. And the sole thing I want to do is I want to print hello world, which is the most basic program you can do in any computer programming language. I can save this file now. Don't have to enter a name because I already named it before. Close the editor and execute it doing Python 3 and the name of the file. This works nicely. However, if I want to execute this file as a real program, then I have to make it executable. Let's list the file ls-l with more details. Here are all kinds of details. We have read and write rights for the current user, but no executable rights. These are the rights for people in the group which, belong, which the file belongs to, and these are the rights for everybody else. 
This is the user who controls the file and that's the group. If I want to give this file executable permissions, I can use chmod, like change mode. The user should have executable permissions, u plus x, hello.py, and let's look ls minus l. Now we have executable permissions, and I can execute the file with dot slash hello.python. You have to do the dot slash because security essentially dictates that we do not execute uh, programs in the current directory without explicitly wanting to do so. All right. Now, if I want to edit this program, I can click on hello.py, but nothing will happen because it's an executable program which runs and then, well, it's done. So if I want to edit it again, I can do right click, open with, Kate, and change the file to whatever I want to change it to. Say, what a beautiful morning. Save it. And even inside the text editor, I have a plugin with a terminal. So I can run it here, dot slash hello. And it works nicely. Or Python 3, hello. This works as well. Now let's close this file and look at how to compress a folder so we can send it off to somebody else. Go back to the <coughs> to the main home directory, click on the directory I want to compress with the right mouse button and can say compress here and it will immediately create a dot 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 gzip archive which is very good for sending source code. Alright, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you'll enjoy getting more experience with your new Linux environment and will just clean my console here with Ctrl L.